Praise the Lord, Word of Flame Ministries. Greetings to you in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to our Wednesday night midweek manner. I'm so excited to share with you the Word of God tonight and all that the Lord is doing and has prepared for you in tonight's message. But before that, I just want to leave you with a word of encouragement, uh, a prelude to tonight. Uh, we received such a phenomenal message and Word of God this last Sunday night with the ministry of Brother Mark Dross. That message was delivered in 2019 during our Exodus Conference, in a year where we experienced tremendous growth, tremendous revival, where the power and the liberty of the Holy Ghost ministered beyond just that service, but into our not-so-distant future. The Lord prepared us, got us ready for the thing that He was about to pour upon us, and I want to give you victory reports of how the Lord ministered during that time with healings, miracles, uh, infillings of the Holy Ghost, water baptisms. But we had to suffer persecution first. And the persecution came in many different forms. Of course, one area of persecution that we are currently in is with this pandemic, this COVID-19 that has plagued us and has been upon us. But in the midst of this, I have seen you grow. I have seen you expand in your ministries. I've seen you continue to enlarge the territories in which God has blessed you with. I've seen some of you grow in anointing. I've watched others of you grow into new ministry, and I've seen many of you grow into deeper commitment and relationship with the Lord. Others of you, you're brand new because of the miracle working power of Jesus Christ that was spoken during Exodus Conference 2019. I want to assure you that you are here for such a time as this. And this word that you're going to receive tonight is just a reminder that God is on your side. You are not forgotten and that he is still in control. Before we get into tonight's word, I do want to uh, bring us up to date on a few announcements, things that are coming up here at Word of Flame that I want you to stay connected with. Last night and every Monday night at 7 p.m., we have our war on the floor via Zoom. That is our church corporate power hour. And we have a mighty, powerful time in the Lord as we hear different church members pray over the Zoom call over specific needs and specific things that have been laid out before us. God is doing great and mighty things. And the Lord always is formulating and moving pieces of our life this way and that way. But the way we, stu we stay tuned in to what the Lord is doing is through prayer. I would encourage you to tap in with us every Monday night, 7 p.m. You may have had a great Monday, you may have had a really bad Monday, or an average Monday. Whatever the case, there is a prayer power hour that is waiting for you Monday night, 7 p.m. via Zoom. We want you to join in. You don't have to be part of our church to join in. Matter of fact, you can join in just by simply requesting one of our church members to send you the link, and we would gladly receive you and the prayers to Almighty Jesus as we get our Zoom call started at 7 p.m. Monday nights for prayer, war on the floor. On Tuesday nights, we have our friendship groups, and those are being done via Zoom right now. We want you to stay connected, stay a part of your friendship group, invite others to watch on, on Zoom uh, for our friendship groups, and it's gonna be a glorious time as we impart the Word of God one towards another. I also want to make mention that on Wednesday nights, just like tonight, we have our midweek manna, and that is something that we encourage you to watch, get your whole family together, make sure that you hear and receive this powerful word of the Lord that not only sustains you, but helps build you throughout the middle of your week. This is the word of God, and it's just for you. Amen. Some things that are coming up uh, in our calendar this week our juniors are having a get-together, and they are going to be ministered to uh, through our junior leaders, brother and sister Grimaldo, and uh, via Zoom. And so you can be ahead and or go ahead and contact them, and they'll contact you if you'd like to be part of that juniors Thanksgiving event that they have planned this coming Thursday. Also, coming up on the 20th, amen, we have our youth uh, bonfire and our youth uh, uh, Friendsgiving that is going to be taking place. Uh, Sister Yenny and Brother Frankie, and along with our hyphen director, Sister Keisha, under the direction of our 
youth pastor, brother and sister Maganium have organized and have put together a great friends giving. And we want you to take part of that if you're part of the junior, the youth, or the hyphen. Make sure that you are there and having a spirit of thanksgiving. Also, our benevolent service will be taking place November the 22nd. What is benevolent service? It's a service that we specifically designed to show thanksgiving to the Lord for what we have been given and afforded as well as giving back to the community. How do we do that? We do that by donating to the Azusa Lighthouse Mission in downtown LA on Skid Row. We are collecting right now blankets and sweaters and jackets. Uh, they could be new or they could be gently used, but we wanna give our best as an offering unto the Azusa Lighthouse and ultimately as an offering unto the Lord. Please, please send in your jackets, send in your uh, blankets to brother and sister Magania, Pastor Peter and sister Kirsten, so they can be able to collect them and organize on how to get it over to the Azusa Lighthouse Mission in this cold winter season. Amen. Uh, we want to be able to give tonight. Uh, offering is a form of worship, and we enjoy being able to give of our offering and of our substance unto the Lord. I want to thank each and, one of we, each and every one of you givers who gave on Sunday. Thank you for being faithful. Even though we're not meeting in our regular church building, I want to thank you for being faithful with your tithe, with your offering. The Lord sees those kind of things. A lot of people might not see those, but God sees those things. And it's much appreciated uh, to the staff of Word of Flame Ministries and to God Almighty. So please continue to be faithful with your giving. God will always reward you when you give Him something to work with. Your offering and your tithe, that's giving God something to work with. After all, it's not ours anyways. It is the Lord's and we're just stewards of it. So repeat after me, declare this benediction into the atmosphere as we get ready to receive tonight's offering. And of course, you can receive tonight's offering. You can send your offering uh, via push pay or on our uh, Word of Flame Ministries app or text to give. The text to give instructions are up on the screen and you can see that and be able to follow those instructions and be cheerful givers tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Repeat after me as you get ready to give your offering. As I give in today's offering, I give thanks to the God of my salvation, to the God who has shown me unmerited mercy, and he gives me a new heart, a new life, and a new destiny. Thank you, Lord, for all of your gracious provisions. I am amazed of how you are consistently watching over me and over every area of my life. I bring this offering today with a thankful heart to a giving Savior. Amen. In Psalms chapter 79, verse number 13, it reads, So we, thy people, and the sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praises to all generations. And then in Psalms 106, verse number one, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Let's, let's bow our heads in prayer right now as you continue to give. And I want to pray a blessing over each and every one of you that the Lord would continue to multiply everything that the God has given you stewardship over. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these givers. We thank you for these members of Word of Flame. We thank you for each and every one that is listening right now, Lord. I pray that you would allow the liberty of your spirit to overwhelm them, to overtake them, pour out blessing upon them, spiritual blessing, uh, monetary blessing, Lord, mental and physical blessing upon their bodies and allow your spirit to be with them so that we can be able to multiply every blessing that you have given us. For we are just stewards of the mighty things that you have placed in our hands, Lord. Small or great, 
little or large, we surrender them to you and we remember that you are the giver, the creator, the mighty provider that does all things. To you be all the glory and all the praise. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Tonight's message is a powerful message. It's a message, amen, that uh, was uh, instilled upon my heart to share with you and to minister to you. It's a message that reminds us that in the heat of the battle and in the heat of everything that is going on and circumstances and distractions, God is still in control. And the things that have come and attached themselves from yesterday and try to hang on to us today, the Lord wants to cut them off so that can, we can reach forward to the powerful destiny that he has designed for us. You are people of destiny. You are people of purpose. You are people with a mission that God has designed specifically for you. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is cutting off yesterday to launch you into tomorrow. Today is a day where it is finished and God is starting a new beginning inside of you. Receive this word tonight that the Spirit of the Lord minister to you. God bless you, Word of Flame. We look, see, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. In Jesus' name.
He's not in a position that he is in because, because he's a relative. He's there for his own merits. Amen. He has shown me and you and God that his relationship with God is real and it's true. Amen. A amen. And his commitment to God is real and it's true. So I'm totally confident, confident that this man of God has a relationship with God. So I bring him here tonight to preach to us the word of the Lord. Amen. Would you come and preach? Amen. Let's, let's give the hand clap to Jesus. Amen. Let's give it up for Jesus in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To you be all the praise and the glory, O Lord. Because your word, because your word, God. Because you are honorable and righteous. Faithful. Faithful, God. Faithful, God. Faithful, God. Faithful, God. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you can turn them to the book of John and then also, amen, to the book of Philippians. While you're turning to John chapter 19, I do want to say uh, I would have been just as happy if Pastor just would have just kept it flowing. Amen. Just kept it rolling. Uh, there's a beautiful thing when you fall in love with the words of your pastor. When you learn to receive the words of your pastor, regardless of what he's talking about, preaching about, if you recognize that, hey, that's for me. That's not for sister so and so or for brother so and so. That's for me. And when you fall in love with that instruction, that reproof, that correction, that revelation, inspiration from your pastor, so many adjectives, amen. When you fall in love with that and you recognize that's for you, you cleave to every word that the man of God preaches across the pulpit because you want to get it all. I want to be like him. I want a connection with Jesus like he's got one. I want a relationship with the Lord like he's got. Amen. So I encourage you to continue to uh, follow after the man of God. Follow after your pastor and what he brings across his pulpit, whether it's just a, a, a small admonishment or a message, because that's word for you. Somebody say it's for me. Amen. That's word for you. Amen. If you, So I honor my pastor, my first lady, and uh, it's good to have my sister in the house. Amen. I call her my little sister because she's a little uh, vertically challenged more than I am. But uh, she is older, as you can tell. Amen. But she is beautiful. Beautiful in spirit. Amen. And I honor. <laughs> I know I got the mic right now. And I honor, of course, my brother-in-law. I, 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 I couldn't have asked for a better gift to my sister. So I thank you, Tino, for spending time with the in-laws. Amen. Amen. And, of course, they have uh, given us a beautiful uh, niece, granddaughter. Amen. Selena. And uh, I am so glad they're training her up in the ways of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Okay, John chapter 19. And of course, I thank the Lord for a wife. Praise God. I can't forget her. Amen. Sister Alma is, she's my rib. <laughs> Enough said. Amen. And, and yeah, she's got them counted. <laughs> Amen. She reminds me. Amen. John chapter 19, verse 30. And then we're going to go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. These are two common portions of scripture. Uh, if you have your highlighter, highlight them in your Bible. I will tell you tonight that I have come with a thought. Just, just a thought. I'm just going to talk to you. And we're going to allow the Lord and the Spirit of Almighty God to lead and to guide us. But I believe that 2019 is done. It's finished. And I'm willing to let it go. Because I'm reaching forth to what God has before me. Does anyone want to reach forth? Does anybody want to achieve, want to grab, want to take hold of what is before them? Amen. John chapter 19, verse 30. Speaking of Jesus, it said, When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Again, right there in the middle of that scripture, he said, Jesus said, it's finished in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 through 14 man uh, Philippians 3 13 through 14 
It says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Tell your neighbor, it's behind me. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, it's before me and it's in Christ Jesus. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord and give him praise? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we ask for the divine impartation of your word that you would preach, that you would speak, uh, that you would minister into our hearts. I want what you got for me, God, uh, not what I got. Uh, and I would, Lord, that you would allow your beautiful spirit to reside here as we worship, uh, as we praise, uh, and as we give you the glory for all that you have done. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now I want you to clap and shout because 2019 is done. It's done. It's done. And I want you to give God another glory for what is before you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. Just follow with me tonight. But uh, a few years ago, I, I was we were living... Uh, on the other side of Kalima in Hacienda Heights, we were renting a house there, me and my family. And uh, we had this avocado tree in the backyard. And, and I, I mean, I know very few Mexicanos who don't like avocates. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And so, but this avocado tree, what I noticed when I got to the house, it was only producing avocados maybe the size of like a half dollar. I mean, they were tiny tiny little things and then they'd fall off and then i said okay well i'm a tree guy man i need to doctor this thing up so i started loosening the ground around it i started giving it vitamin b probably a little bit too much <laughs> but i started giving it vitamins and putting uh, fertilizer down on the ground started watering the thing dig a, a small trench around it because it was kind of on a little slope and and started giving it a whole bunch of water in hopes that it would produce fruit next season I knew it was not going to give me fruit right then and there. I knew that the avocados, amen, no, uh, no matter how much I watered it and how much I fertilized it, by next week, they weren't going to produce big old nice grapefruit-sized avocados. That just, just wasn't going to happen. And, and I also knew no matter how much I wished it to happen, it was not going to happen immediately. Somebody say, it takes time. And so I recognize that there was a process of time that needed to take place in order for me to get a harvest. And if I was going to allow the process of time to take place, I needed to implement and invest some things into the avocado tree so that it can give me a harvest. So I would went ahead and invested fertilizer. I went ahead and invested in you know, cultivating the ground. And then I went ahead and invested putting water on the tree. And in time, the avocados began to grow bigger. Praise God. Now, instead of having a little chip size avocado, I had a taco size avocado. And I was thanking the Lord for those taco size avocados. Amen. And then I started to look at the tree and I said, man, wouldn't it be cool to build a tree house around that tree? Oh, man, I got inspired. But then I said, you know what? It'd be better if I just built like a, a little deck first around the tree so I could sit underneath the tree because it's a beautiful shade tree. So uh, this happened all on one Saturday morning. Hallelujah. And so I ran to the garage and got all my extra materials, my extra nails and screws that 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 uh, uh, pastor always says I save too much stuff. And so but all that stuff was coming in handy. And so I got all my nails and screws and my extra bags of cement and, and extra boards. And I put it all together and I started to make my deck around the avocado tree one Saturday morning. I got stuck. So I called pastor. I said, Dad. How do I do this thing? 
And, and so he gave me some instructions about how to build a deck. And, you know, you want to lay your boards this way. You want to make sure that, you know, you're not putting your boards too far apart because when you lay your floor down, you know, it's going to sink and it's, it's not going to be strong and sturdy and so on and so forth. And so I built this deck around the avocado tree. It was nice. It was cool. And then I started to look at it some more and I said, man, this would be a cool deck of a ship. And then I got this crazy idea. I could build a pirate ship out of this thing. And so then I started to form sides to the deck and, and build a rail around it. And pastor came over one day and he says, what are you doing? And I was knee deep in it. I would stay up till like one o'clock in the morning, the poor neighbors cutting and drilling and screwing because I was determined that I was going to finish the project that I started. And I think one of the main challenges in today's life with young people, elders, maybe in, in, in today in our American culture, is that we do not finish what we start. We wait for other people to help us or, or abandon ship on projects because it doesn't happen immediately just like my avocado tree. It doesn't happen exactly by the next week or, or by the month's end or, or by the year's end even. So we abandon projects instead of finishing them till the end. But I was determined I wasn't going to let that happen with my ship. And so I continued to build my ship, got some more notes from pastor. Pretty soon the thing had rails with the rope hanging through it. Uh, and, and that got done. And then I looked up and I was like, oh man, that's a perfect spot for a crow's nest. And so then I, I drill into the floor and, and assemble a big thick beam. And, I, and, and, and in the fork of the tree, I put a, another level and a crow's nest up there. And, and, and what's funny is that in this whole in-between process, I'm harding letting the kids play on the thing because I built it for the kids, but I'm, I'm like, don't mess anything up, okay? <laughs> and and uh, so I build this crow's nest, and it takes me almost, almost three months to complete this pirate ship around my avocado tree that I've been nurturing and, and watering and caring for. And, and, and it takes me almost three months to build this ship, and then finally... I'm finished. Talk about a sense of gratification. Talk about feeling good about your pirate ship. I mean, I felt so proud. I thought it was the best pirate ship ever. I even drew plans for it and, 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 and on, on, a, on a piece of paper. You know, no measurements, just, just a little ship, stick figure, you know. And, and, and I, I showed it to pastor. He's like, what is this? <laughs> and, and, but I was so proud that I had finished my ship. And there was a sense of accomplishment because I finished. And I want to let you know that when you finish something, young people, you will feel accomplished, especially when you finish the race and finish the course that God has got you on. If you do not abandon ship, God will reward you for finishing and finishing well. And I felt very accomplished. I felt very accomplished that I had finished this ship. I was so proud. I, I threw my kid's birthday party on it, and we had Nerf Wars, and we had all kinds of things going on on that pirate ship. And it, it was the, the coolest thing, I thought, that pirate ship. And, and so the sense of accomplishment that I felt by finishing it came together also with a, a, a understanding in my mind that things do not happen overnight. Processes do not take place instantaneously. There was not a kit that I could have followed. There was no plans on Google that I, that, that I tried to follow. There was no measurements uh, that someone else had posted that I tried to follow. But the ship took place uh, based out of the direction that I was inspired with. Uh, and can I tell some of you today that you're like that ship uh, and God has speaking inspiration into your life. Uh, and if you allow God to finish the work uh, that he is starting in you, uh, you're going to stand back uh, and you're going to recognize uh, that you are more than what you started with. You are more than what you began with uh, because God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Amen. 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 We look at the life of David. And David, we know, was preceded by Saul, King Saul. But David could not have come about 
if their first was not a Saul. And Saul, we know that he was head and shoulders, and I'm not going to get uh, too detailed into the story, but we understand that Saul was head and shoulders above everybody else, and he was the first king of Israel. But even though he was head and shoulders above everybody else, and even though he had the prestigious title of being the first king of Israel, Saul had a pastor. Saul had a man of God in his life. And I want to let you know that regardless of what title that you may gain or what uh, uh, office that you may feel, you will always need a man of God in your life. You will always need a pastor to lead and to guide you, to give you instruction and correction. You cannot achieve the throne of success without having a leader teach you how to get there. I said, you cannot achieve the throne of success without having someone carve the way ahead of you and lead you how to get there. And I am so thankful. I want to pause and give a time out because I'm so thankful that I got a pastor. I'm so thankful that I got a man of God. I am so thankful that I have a first lady who have carved the way, broken the road, trailblazed the path so I can get to the throne of success. Can you give God a praise for that? I mean it. Can you give God a praise for that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But we look at the life of Saul before David, and we look at the life of Saul, and Saul had some mistakes that he endured while he was in his kingship. I think of one specifically that Saul, uh, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, amen, Samuel also said to Saul, the Lord has sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh, I remember that which Elimelech did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way, and when he came out or when he came up from Egypt, now go smite Elimelech and utterly destroy all that they have and and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Amen. These instructions came specifically from the prophet Samuel to Saul. And you always need to follow instructions to a T when they come from your man of God. I'm talking to a mixed congregation here of young people to elders, but it does not matter our age. It does not matter what season of life we are in. If instructions come from across the pulpit, I need to write them down and I need to execute them because I am after my reward. I am after the thing that God has set before me and I want to finish well. And so we find here that, that, that Samuel gives specific instructions to Saul. And in those instructions, he's saying, I remember what the king, the neighboring king, how we afflicted my people. Saul, I want you to go and I want you to uh, completely eradicate the sin that has infected my people. Completely eradicate the disease that has infected my people. I mean, don't take nobody prisoner. Don't take nobody hostage. Kill the baby. Kill the mother. Kill the sheep. Kill the calf. Kill the ox. Kill the king. Kill everything. Don't let this sin live any longer to affect my people. I hope you're making some parallels here already. This is not Sunday school, amen. Sunday school is across the hall. But this is just specifically for you so that you would recognize that when the instruction comes across the pulpit, when it says to roar like a lion, that you need to get up on all four and you need to say, I'm going to roar. I'm going to shout. I'm going to proclaim because my pastor has given me instructions. To do so. I 
I want to just continue here for a second to remind you, amen, uh, that God has a divine order. And when he speaks his divine order, it's always through a man of God. Uh, from page to page, Genesis to Revelation, God has always spoken through a man to his people. He's always spoken through an angel of the church uh, unto the people to give us instructions, uh, to give us correction, and to give us the know-how, how to get things right, uh, how to live blessed, uh, how to get into our prayer promise how to see prophecy fulfilled and i cannot do it without the man in my life but i must fulfill amen and i must pursue the instructions given it is vital to your christian walk and vital to your success as a person an individual amen that you follow the instructions that you are given your success depends upon it. We know the story, amen, amen. Saul went over to Elimelech's land or to the Amalekites and began to claim victory. He began to kill and hew and cut down. And the Amalekites have always been a type of sin in the side of Israel. Amen. It's a foreshadow of sin in the side of Israel. The Amalekites have always poised a threat and, and caused sin to enter into the camp of Israel. And God was trying to eradicate the sin through the instructions of the man of God. God is trying to eradicate the sin that you may have bed, uh, uh, laid in bed with in 2019. And then the sin that you may have been involved with over this last year through the instructions of the man of God. God, he's trying to get you to cut off that sin, cut off those perversions, cut off those besetting ideas, cut off those besetting habits. There's some bad habits in 2019. I don't need to carry over into 2020. There's some bad things that I engage with that I don't need to carry over. But the man of God has given me some instructions. I got to cut it off. I got to kill it. I got to utterly destroy it. I can't leave a remnant of it to bother me anymore. I can't leave a piece of it and compromise with it. Because I don't want it infecting my life anymore. It's got to be finished. If I'm going to succeed to what is in front of me. Samuel was giving Saul instructions saying, finish it. Kill it. Destroy the sin. Every last thing. Don't you save an ox. Don't you save a sheep. Don't you save a baby. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> Don't you save uh, that old post on Instagram. Uh, don't you save uh, that old friend uh, from way back then. Uh, don't you save uh, that thing and just hide it and tuck it away in the closet. Don't you save uh, that offense in your heart. Uh, you got to absolutely kill it. Uh, you got to cut it off. Uh, you got to destroy it uh, and put it behind you and say it's finished and I'm letting it go. Samuel was trying to get Saul to understand this and trying to get Saul to comprehend in his mind that once you close the chapter on it, it's not going to bother you anymore. Once you close the book on it, it's not going to affect you anymore. You could be liberated tonight if you would just kill it. You could be set free of that thing tonight if you would just shut it off. You could be set free of that besetting idea, that besetting comment, that antagonizing concept in your mind. Mind, that old depression, that old oppression, that old sin that weighs heavy. You don't have to carry a weight. You don't have to carry an ounce of baggage. You don't have to carry any guilt, any more shame, any more condemnation on you because you have given the power to kill it, destroy it, and say, Tonight it is finished. Give God a praise if you believe that. Give God a praise. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
Sometimes I believe the thing that we fail to realize uh, is that when the man of God speaks it across a pulpit uh, under the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost, uh, what is he doing? He is enduing you with the power to get it done. You're just not recipients and hearers only, but you become a doer of the word of God. So when the man of God releases the word over you, you need to pick that up and say, hey, uh, the man of God said, I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I can do this. I can roar. I can shout. I can take territory. I can take land. I will not allow generational curses to get a hold of me. I will not take the baggage of yesterday into tomorrow. When it's been spoken over you, you have the power to do it. Samuel spoken over Saul. Saul had the power to eradicate uh, and we must exercise the God-given authority. We must exercise the God-given authority over our lives. In order to disconnect from the things of the past. To reach toward the greatness of the future. Give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When pastors, amen, gets up here, he begins to preach the word of God or the evangelist comes uh, and he begins to minister the word of God uh, and he begins to allow you to feel and you get caught up in the emotion. Uh, you get caught up in the hype. Uh, you get caught up in the excitement of the word uh, and you hoop and holler and shout. Uh, that's good. Uh, but also recognize uh, that some has been deposited inside of you uh, that God uh, allowed your available vessel to put deposit uh, an anointing in you uh, to deposit a boldness in you he don't want you to be hyped up for just a night he don't want your hype he wants your fight he wants you to get up on monday and fight against the enemy get up on tuesday and fight against the liar and the conniver i'm not going there i'm not stepping in that arena i'm not stepping in that realm anymore because it's done it is finished in the name of jesus Hallelujah. I'm trying to move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We know the story. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Saul that day decides not to kill everybody. He decides not to kill the king. Of all people, my Lord. Of all people, not to kill. He spares the king and his sons. He spares the best cattle and the best sheep. He does not fully take to heart that the instructions that were given him were not suggestions. That the instructions that were given him were not suggestions. And can I tell you here tonight, uh, if you feel the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, uh, it's probably because the instruction that the man of God has spoken in your life uh, was not a suggestion. Uh, you need to take it to heart uh, as this is a must do. This is a commandment that I must adhere to. I must take a hold uh, if I'm going to allow the thing to be finished in my life and let go of. And unfortunately, Samuel allowed survivors to come and, and back from Amalekite. And, and, and if I could read to you, amen, some more of the story in Samuel chapter 15. Amen. The, the, and I'm going to just skim through this. But, but Samuel allowed some people to come back. He didn't kill everybody. He didn't eradicate everybody. He didn't kill all the sheep and all the goats and all the cattle like he was supposed to. He let them survive. And when Samuel, his, his pastor, comes to him and says, Saul, what is this? Why do I hear the neighing of sheep? Why do I see the king still alive? Did I not tell you? Did the Lord not say, get rid of all the sin of the Amalekites? And I wonder here tonight uh, that if we sit here with still a little uh, uh, Amalekite next to us, 
I wonder if we sit here tonight uh, with a little Amalekite in our hearts, uh, a little Amalekite in our rooms, uh, a little Amalekite in our closets, uh, a little Amalekite in our cars, uh, in our glove compartment, uh, in our cubbies, uh, in our cutesy little Facebook posts, uh, because we didn't all totally eradicate the Amalekite in our lives. Samuel here in, in verse number 22, it says, And Samuel saith, Hath the Lord as, as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. As in obey or, uh, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as the is as iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of the lord he hath also rejected thee as king judgment came upon him immediately and if we if there's anything that i could relate to you or tell you that i've been at that end of the stick where i did not adhere to the voice of my pastor or the voice of my pastor's wife and i've had judgment on my life and just to give you a quick little story amen i was just a young man 17 years old so some of you guys that are 17 amen you feel me on this one okay Amen. I was just a young man, 17 years old, still living at home with mom and dad. And, and I was a little rebellious little booger. Amen. I'm, I was 21 years ago. Just to make, I know I look like I'm 17 still. Hallelujah. But I was 21 years ago. Praise the Lord. And I was a rebellious little booger. And, and, and I, I spoke out of sorts with my mother. And she said, Esteban, if you don't watch your mouth and shut it right now, the Lord will shut it for you. Oh, see? It wasn't two hours later I broke my jaw and had to have it wired shut. And Peter's in a testament to that. I'm dead serious. I got a scar right here to prove it, and it snapped here and here. But you must specifically follow the instructions that are given you. Because if you are going to have success in your life, then there must be instruction that is followed in order for you to gain that success in your life. And here, Samuel is pleading, telling him that obedience is better than sacrifice. And I thank God for a man of God who is patient. I thank the Lord for a man of God who can still pick us up and say, hey, you didn't get it right this time, but we're going to get it right next time. I thank the Lord for a man of God who hasn't written some of you off. Thank the Lord for a man of God who didn't write me off. I thank the Lord for a woman of God who said, hey, you can still do it. You can still get up. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be alive. And that's exactly what took place here. Samuel said, okay, Saul, you messed up. You made a mess. But let me help you fix the correction that you, or, or, or fix the mistake that you made. Come here, pastor. Amen. And, he, and the Bible says, this is something we don't read that often. But the Bible says that he went and he said, where is the Alamakite king? Where's Agag at? Where's the sin at? Where's the chief of the sin? Where's the root of the sin at? And the Bible says that they brought the king. Amen. And the king began to beg for mercy in front of Samuel and said, Is not the, the heat of battle over? Is not the time of death over already? And Samuel took the sword. Take the sword, pastor. Took the sword and he lightly caressed him. He lightly cut him. He said like the three musketeers and... The Bible says that right here, I'm going to read it to you, matter of fact. And it says in verse, in verse number 33 of Samuel 15, And Samuel said, As thy sword hath made woman childless, so thy mother will be childless among women. And Samuel hewned Agag into pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. 
I want to thank God for a man of God who says no to sin, who says no to perversion, who says no to the culture of this world, who will take the sin and says, youngster, young man, young lady, this is how you treat sin. This is how you treat the ugliness of this world. This is how you treat the enemy and the devil. He's not here to play games. And guess what, children of Israel? We're not here to play games. Tonight, 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 the sin is finished. Give God a praise. Somebody raise up your sword. Somebody open up your mouth and let the lion know. Let the lion Give God a pray. Come on. Speak in tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. Let the enemy know. Let hell know. I am taking sin out. I am killing the root of sin in my life. It's done. It's finished. Young people, I came back from HYC. I'm not going back the same. I'm not returning to the vomit. I'm not returning to the sin. I'm not returning to the pain. Oh, come on, just for another minute here. You need to disconnect from that past. You need to disconnect from yesterday. You need to disconnect from what hurt you, what pained you, what offended you, what caused you turmoil, what caused you hurt, what left scars on your body. Because you got to reach forward to what's in front of you. I feel something in the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I tell some of you, amen, that was for the young people, but can I tell some of you adults, some of you long-time Christianers, amen, that have been in this for a while, amen, that you got to be able to let go of past offenses. You got to be able to let go of past guilt. You got to let be able to let go of people who have offended you. They're not coming to ask you for your forgiveness, baby. They're not going to come back and ask you and say, I'm sorry to you, but you got to let it go. You got to let it die. You got to let that root, that Amalekite of offense die here tonight because you can't take it with you the Amalekite was not meant to occupy your house the Amalekite was not meant to share your spoils was not meant to live in your promised land the Amalekite was not meant for you to have a home and house with you gotta kill the Amalekite tonight I'm killing this thing. I'm killing this thing. Unforgiveness. I'm killing you. Uh, grudges. Uh, I'm killing you tonight. Uh. I speak to the minds of the people, oh Lord. The past scars upon the minds. The past turmoils upon the minds. The bad memories that the enemy has left upon the minds of your people. Free them in the name of Jesus. Let them go. Heal the wounds. Heal the scars. And take them and dip them in your precious blood. I just feel it's in the Holy Ghost. If you got a scar on your mind, would you just put your hands on your head right now and ask the Lord to bathe you with his blood. Bathe you. This is it right here. This is one of those instructions. This is one of those instructions right here. We're going to kill this Amalekite. We're going to destroy this Amalekite. It's done. It's done. You will not tor me, torment me. Uh, you will not weigh heavy on me. You will not cause me to feel cold in my spirit. Uh, you will not cause me to feel disconnected from the body of Christ. Uh, you will not cause me to feel distant from my pastor and my first lady. You will not cause me to feel insignificant, unimportant, uh, of no value. Uh, Amalekite, uh, you're dying tonight. Uh, Amalekite, uh, I'm going to bury you tonight. Uh, Amalekite, uh, get out of my house. Uh, it is finished. Sakaraba, 
there's something that needs to take place i'm not in a rush to go forward i'm gonna give you the opportunity pick up the sword of the spirit pick up the instructions of your man of god and slay that thing kill that thing eradicate that thing it has no right to bother you anymore it has no right to follow you into 2020 it has no right to lay hands upon you and lay claws into your mind and put a mouth or a close upon your prophetic word and lips it is done my future will be different my future will be blessed my house will be blessed that curse is behind me it is done I've broken the words of that curse I've crushed the words of that curse under my feet through the blood and the power of Jesus it's finished it's finished Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I just feel the Holy Ghost. Why don't you all stand to your feet right now in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I want you to put the hand up on your neighbor and I want you to pray for them right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we don't want any offenses between us, God. We don't want any hurts or pains between us, Lord. We don't want anything between us. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are united. I pray unity upon every marriage. I pray unity upon every marriage. I pray unity upon every marriage. I pray that you will, Lord, allow a great washing of your blood to flow across the people and to flow across the minds of the hearts of the men and of the women. Satarabasaya. Amalekite, you gotta die. Amalekite, you're dying tonight. Hara, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Curses of 2001 be broken in the name of Jesus. Curses of 2002 be broken in Jesus' name. Curses of 2003, 4, 5, and 6 be eradicated by the blood and the power of Jesus Christ. Curses of 2007, 8, and 9 be destroyed and completely broken and obliterated by the blood of Jesus Christ. Curses of 2010 and 11, you will not leave a lasting mark upon this life anymore. Curses of 2012, you are broken. Curses of 2013, you are gone in the past. Curses of 2014 and 15, no more will you bug me. No more will you live with me. Curses of 2018, you're gone. Curses of 2019, I am not taking you into my apostolic destiny. It is finished the Holy Ghost is moving I want you to come forward to this altar right now in the name of Jesus if you can come with your spouse or your couple keep praying amen but if you come with your spouse or your couple please do so but we're gonna do something tonight uh, that we don't usually do but this thing's gonna die here tonight uh, this thing is gonna end uh, we're the flame, we're not gonna be the same. We're the flame, we're not taking. Listen to me, listen to me. We're the flame, we are not taking it with us. I said, we are not taking it with us. I just feel this right now. We are not taking the mentality of the pit with us. I said we are not taking the mentality that we are in a pit with us. We are not taking the mentality that we are the bower with us. 
we are not taking the mentality that we will never have our own or that we will never grow or expand we are not taking the mentality of limited thinking with us my God is exponential. My God is beyond comprehension. Multiplication cannot justify the growth that he wants to do with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. John chapter 19, verse 30 again. I'm going to start reading at verse number 25. John 19, 25. Continue to pray, please. I want you to picture your mind here. Jesus had just got done having supper with the disciples. He just finished having last supper. He just finished breaking the bread that you broke this last Sunday. He just finished sharing the fruit of the vine that you drank this last Sunday. He had just finished washing the feet of his disciples. What was he doing? He was saying right here, right now, I'm finishing it. The bondage of sin that my people have carried since conception, it's going to get done. The hurt and the turmoil of oppression that they have felt from different dictators and rulers, it's going to finish. And, and what Jesus was about to do, with the sacrifice of the cross was going to do more for the world than the world could ever expect. And in, in John chapter 19, verse 25, it starts reading, it says, And there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cle Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And then he said to the disciples, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. And after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, it was done. He had eradicated it all was finished he had completed it all he had endured the suffering and can I tell you that that the suffering of Jesus at any given point he could have said you know I'm done here at the whipping post I feel the Holy Ghost right now I I'm done here at the whipping post no more He could have said that but he didn't because that only would have taken your your sicknesses away but would have never taken your sin away He could have said, I'm done here at this bogus trial between Pontius Pilate and, 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 and the, uh, the Sanhedrin court. I'm done here. But he didn't do that because that would have only taken care of him being your advocate. And he could have said, I'm done here walking up this ridiculous cross up to the Mount Golgotha. That wouldn't have taken care of your sin. He had to do all. Accomplish all. Until the end. And after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. And now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon kiss him and put it to his mouth and when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar more pain more suffering he said it is finished the Greek word for finished right there is tetelestia tetelestia which is one word but for our English vernacular, it translates to it's done. It was right there at that point of the cross where he says, where well, I could have quit at the whipping post or I could have quit at the courthouse or I could have quit right here on the way to Golgotha. But now that I have given it my all to the end, it is done. 
and it is done it is finished amen goes and stretches all the way into the new testament and into the gospel of the first church that says that every time that you are baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of your sins those words are once again uttered in heaven it's done your sin bondage is done your sin inheritance is done what is he saying jesus is literally saying i'm getting the neck of the amalekite and i'm squeezing the life out of it because it will no longer bother you again it's finished tonight amen uh, i am going to ask you to get the thing in your mind uh, uh, if, if you are a couple here tonight if you are here with with your spouse i want you to face your spouse please if you go if you're a single adult child amen, or your 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 spouse is not here that's fine we're gonna go through some instruction as well but but if you're with your spouse i i want you to i want you just to look at each other and and you know the battles I know I'm going a little out of order here, but you know the battles, you know the fights. You know the, the, the heartache and the turmoil that you face when you're at home. You know the undecisiveness that goes on. And then it trickles down and reflects upon your kids. But I want you to tell each other tonight, it's finished, it's done. Go ahead, face each other right now. I want you to look at each other and I want you to take a moment and I want you to talk to each other. The, the, the division that the enemy has tried to put in there that Amalekite of division it's done uh, the, 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 the thing that the enemy has tried to get you to pull this way by opinion and pull that way by opinion it's done the sin that has entered in through a side door or a back door it's not going to bother you anymore it is done in the name of Jesus Christ uh, while well, you're talking to your spouse a uh, young person young adult single here today those of you who don't have your spouse uh, you need to have a uh, just have a conversation with Jesus right now you know the thing that has been holding you back holding you down you know the things that have held you hostage over these last few years just not in 2019 but over these last few years uh, you know the things that have held you down the besetting sins that are hidden in your rooms uh, or hidden in your minds or hidden there in the secret compartments of your life and you want to break free from it yes, hallelujah. pornography I got to break free lasciviousness I got to break free a lying tongue I got to break free a deceiving spirit I got to break free a depression that weighs heavy on me a sickness in my body I said I want to hear your voice lift it up into heaven it's not gonna bother me anymore that Amalekite's dying tonight that Amalekite is dying tonight Come on, you got to confess it. You got to be honest with yourself. I'm waiting for some of you to be transparent. Uh, we're not talking about the surface stuff. We're talking about the inner things uh, that have held you bondage and hostage. You have the God-given authority right now in the name of Jesus Christ uh, to eradicate and to kill that thing. I feel this in the Holy Ghost right now. Uh, somebody has a sword in their hand. But unless you lift up that sword, unless you rise up with holy indignation, it's going to remain in your marriage. It's going to remain in your house. It's going to remain in the compartments of your life. And you cannot exercise. 